Hi guys, this is Shakti from Around the Wicket, where we not only speak about the game, but we try to learn more about the humans behind our sport. Now, after 10 years, last year, Pakistan played its first international match at home against uh, Sri Lanka. Um, obviously, a lot of patience and perseverance from the board itself, plus all the public. And obviously, with the commitment to have future series uh, happening, with the confirmation that England's coming to Pakistan next season. So obviously, talking about 2022 onwards, where hopefully more matches are scheduled. I am joined by the PCB CEO in Wasim Khan. Wasim, thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Firstly, tell me how things are going in Pakistan. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. I'm in, I'm in Lahore currently. Um, the weather's perfect at the moment. It's about 20 degrees, no breeze. So uh, we're just sort of going into our slightly colder weather. But, uh, but no, all, all good here so far. I mean, COVID um, up until this second wave was pretty much fractional per 100,000 people. So it's a little bit worse um, second time around as it is everywhere yeah. else around the world. But, uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we're keeping safe. And like with most of our guests, Wasim, um, you know, I just wanted to know a little bit about your background, how, you know, you got involved with cricket and how did the you know, the role of the CEO of one of the biggest, I guess, uh, cricketing boards in the world come about? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, in, in a sort of a two minute snapshot in terms of my, my career, I grew up in inner city Birmingham in the UK, where I was born and bred. Um, at the age of uh, 13, I sort of had my first experience playing cricket at school. I got spotted by a teacher. And uh, at the age of 19, I was offered a professional contract with Warwickshire County Cricket Club uh, that's had the likes of uh, in the 90s. So the likes of Brian Lara, Alan Donald, Sean Pollock all played um, at, the, at the club at the same time as me. Um, and yeah, at the age of 19, I was the first British born Pakistani to be offered mm. a professional contract in the UK. Played professional cricket for 10 years, seven years at Warwickshire, three years at Sussex. Um, I then ran a national campaign to get cricket back into state schools um, called Chance to Shine. It was set up by Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England. Yep. Um, so I um, <clears throat> so I did that for, for nine years as a CEO. We raised £55 million pounds as a charity, wow. um, yep. reached about two million, two and a half million children, of which a million were girls who'd never played cricket before in seven and a half thousand state schools in the UK. And so we ran coaching and competition programs for them. Uh, I also wrote a book, um, Brimful of Passion, which was named Wisdom Book of the Year in 2006. Uh, pretty much as my experiences as a South Asian growing up in inner city Birmingham and breaking into professional cricket, which was a predominantly sort of all white sport at that time, back in the late 80s, early 90s in the UK. Um, so I wrote about that. Um, after that, I moved, I did an MBA at Warwick Business School, a master's there. So I did an executive MBA there for three years. Uh, I got awarded an MBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours mm -hmm. List uh, for services to charity and, and cricket. Um, 2014, I took over as Leicestershire County Cricket Club and, um, as the chief executive um, in the UK. I did that for four years and then I was lucky enough to uh, to go through the process of this uh, and be offered the role and I've now been in the job since as the chief exec of the Pakistan Cricket Board since February 2019. Congratulations on that role as well and uh, incredible uh, pedigree of uh, achievements <clears throat> that you have uh, was accumulated over time. Um, I guess you know let's talk about cricket like I stated you know last year obviously was one of the milestone moments for Pakistan cricket obviously getting international cricket back in the country once again. Uh, ironic, ironically, it was Sri Lanka uh, over there. Tell us about the enormity of, of such an event. Yeah, look, I think I think it's probably fair to say that, you know, Pakistan cricket over the last sort of 10, 15 years has seen some dark times, um, obviously with the match fixing scandal back in 2010, uh, the issues we had with Sri Lanka here in 2009. Um, you know, but, you know, we, we obviously then ended up playing all of our cricket overseas in the UAE, which yep. was never ideal, um, you know, and so therefore this, the fans weren't getting cricket. So from 2015, actually before my time, um, white ball cricket started to come back a little bit. But the slight challenge we had at the time was that <clears throat> we had to play, we had to pay players to get them to come and play mm. in Pakistan mm. at the time, you know, with state level security and everything. So it was yep. sort of very sporadic from 2015 up to 18. Uh, one of the goals that we had was to tr was to consistently get cricket back into Pakistan when I took over in February 19, um, and in, and, it, and especially Test cricket, which hadn't been played since 2009. So white ball cricket a little bit had been played, but no red ball cricket. 
Yeah. Um, so we managed to get Bangladesh and Sri Lanka come over. Uh, Sri Lanka came first and then followed by Bangladesh. Uh, we were delighted, you know, the cricket boards had faith, came over, played. We also had an MCC team come over, which was captained mm. by Kumar Sangakara, mm. who was part of that fateful sort of uh, 2009 trip. Uh, he's been a real advocate for getting cricket back into Pakistan. And so, <clears throat> slowly but surely, we've moved forward. We've just as seriously, uh, recently hosted Zimbabwe, uh, HBL, Pakistan Super League that we have. We have up to 40 international players from all over the globe. We've just spent four weeks in February, March in Pakistan. Mm. Um, so it's probably fair to say as well, Shakti, that, um, you know, that we're as safe as anywhere now in the world. Yeah. Uh, we're never complacent. It's still a lot of work for us to do. But, you know, if you saw what happened recently, well, last year in Sri Lanka and, you know, in New Zealand and places like that, you know, the world, you know, isn't isn't a safe place anywhere. You see what happens in London, in London Bridge with terrorists and stuff. So, you know, there's, you know, there's always different degrees. I understand that. But, you know, we've the country has been cleaned up a lot now through since Imran Khan became the prime minister, you know, fighting a lot of extremism. Uh, We're in a very good place in terms of the major cities now. And, you know, it's something that, you know, we, we fully expect cricket now to, to fully be back. We've we've got South Africa hopefully touring in January for two tests and three T20s. Mm-hmm. We've got the PSL again in February where, we, where we're looking forward to welcoming 30 to 40 international players again. We've got New Zealand due to tour next October. Uh, and then we're hosting England for, for two T20s. Yep. Um, and then after the World Cup, we've got uh, West Indies. And then in 22, we're due to host Australia. Yep. And then England again for a full tour. So, you know, it's a full on sort of two years and a very um, significant two years really for Pakistan cricket. Um, when we played Sri Lanka, we had 20,000 people turning up for the first four days, each of the first four days of the test match in Ralpindi. So that tells you how much test cricket still yep. means to this nation. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, we've been starved of country uh, cricket for a very long time as a country. So it's a huge thing. Um, it's lifted the nation. Cricket is a passion amongst 220 million people. Mm. Um, and, you know, we're delighted that we've been able to play our part in, in just lifting the country again. Yeah. Asim, you touched, up, t- touched upon, you know, safety. Um, you know, probably one of the reasons why, why this happened, uh, one of the biggest reasons why Pakistan didn't get much international cricket. I guess, you know, we as observers, we don't know what goes into, um, you know, making sure a country is safe or, you know, a touring team is safe. Um, how much goes into it? If you, I mean, if you can give us just a snapshot of, um, you know, what goes into uh, planning something like this. Yeah, look, there's a huge amount of planning. Obviously, one of the things we offer is state-level security, so you know, presidential-style security for teams that come. So there's a huge amount of work that needs to be done around logistics. You know, we've currently got four um, venues that we use: Multan, Raul Bindi, Lahore, and Karachi. Uh, predominantly, we tend to use three for international matches, which is uh, Raul Bindi, uh, Karachi and Lahore. Um, so just to give you an example, we recently had the recce team arrive from South Africa, which normally happens before it's all. A recce team arrives, you check hotels, you check uh, transportation, the ground facilities, uh, security, all those sort of aspects which recce teams come and check in host nations. They then provide a report. Um, so the recce team, is, the South African team, were taken, arrived in Islamabad, were taken to Karachi, and then brought to Lahore, the three venues where we're going to looking to host South Africa. Um, so a lot of work goes into that. Um, you have to look at security. Uh, you have to look at all safety provisions from the time the teams arrive in your country uh, to getting picked up, coming out to separate exits when they arrive at airports. Yeah. You know, there's a number of things that. Um, that we kind of put together and um, have to be sort of in place to satisfy the needs of of visiting countries. Um, We work very closely with the security forces in Pakistan to provide state level security. So, um, you know, it's a government um, state level sign off, which is then delivered at a local level through local government. So we work Mm -hmm. with the army, the police, the rangers in each of the various cities. But, you know, we've now been doing this, um, Shakti, now for about, um, obviously, four or five years. So we're pretty clear about the protocols, um, the system, how it works, and all the you know, all the agencies and ourselves work hand in glove and, and have got a really good system. One of the heartwarming, I guess, <clears throat> events of this year was when Pakistan and West Indies toured England. Uh, obviously, during these tough times, you know, it was probably much needed. Um, a lot of goodwill, a lot of courage shown by both teams. Um, tell us about how important it was 
for the board firstly and you know, in building relations moving forward uh, with this uh, with this tool yeah look we had a very interesting situation because one one of the things during covid times if you're going for an extended series to a country where you're playing white ball and red ball because of covid protocols both teams have to travel together at the same mm. time so your squad mm. is is extended so for example our boys left for new zealand yesterday yes. uh, there are 35 players on that squad uh, both red and white ball we've also got an a tour going on at the same time as shaheen's tour in new zealand so um when we went to england we'd we'd announced 29 players to go on that tour because we had a t20 series as well as a red ball series and what the way it works is you can't filter players in and in, into the country they all have to come together they all get moved to a um, secure place where they have to quarantine for 14 days you have to practice under quarantine uh, it's pretty tough for the players mentally uh, but so when we announced the squad of 29 to go to england we tested 10 days before to start with and 10 of our players tested positive um, so we had a bit of a challenge in terms of how to deal with that but you know we felt that you know it was important to show solidarity with with the english england and wales cricket board uh, we would have done that with any other cricket board cricket needed to get on again uh, you know, I think it's a, there's a clear understanding that cricket and COVID or life and COVID need to coexist for a very long time. Yep. So we need to get cricket back on. So once we were convinced that all the protocols that the, that the ECB had put in place were set, uh, we spoke to the West Indies who were providing advice and guidance because they were already there. So they took a bit of a leap of faith to go in the first place. Yep. Um, we arrived and everything was delivered fantastically well. Our players were safe. There was nothing they didn't want for, um, you know, and we we played the series, but it was critical, I think, for cricket and for sport that we we got the game back on again. Yeah. And I think that was really, really important. And because at some stage we needed to start again and it was the ideal time to say, OK, well, you know, uh, we need to start cricket. We need to play our part to, to take cricket back to the world again and, and particularly to, to our fans and the, and the EC and the English fans. So we did that. We were delighted we did it. And, you know, was, the, the tour was very successful from a cricketing point of view. And on the back of that, congratulations, um, you know, with the recent confirmation that England's coming uh, next year at the end of the year to play some T20 international, Hope, hopefully some test matches the year after that. Tell us about, you know, how big this will be for, for, for the nation. Uh, look, it's huge. Um, you know, up until now, we've, um, you know, and, um, you know, we, we'd we had Bangladesh and, Sh and Sri Lanka come quite a lot. And, you know, and people always said, yes, but the South Asian teams are going to come. And, you know, what's a big, what's a big deal? Uh, mm -hmm. So to get England announced now, uh, because let's not forget, it's not part of the Future Tours program, those two yeah. T20 internationals. Mm -hmm. we, ex we explored the January 21 window, but it wasn't feasible because England are due to be travelling to Sri Lanka uh, under COVID protocol, so we couldn't fit it in in the window there. Uh, we worked very closely with the ECB to find another window. Uh, we found the October window. Um, it's not a token gesture. I think it's, it's more a, an opportunity on a couple of levels. One is that, you know, to um, announce really that... It's a good precursor for the main tour in 2022 when they come here, where they're due to play three tests, three ODIs, mm. three T20s. Um, you know, so there's an opportunity, but also provides high-level warm-up matches as well before the World Cup uh, for their, for England and for us. They'll have a full strength side. Yep. Uh, but before that, we've got South Africa. Hopefully, we'll be announcing in the next week that they'll be travelling to us uh, in January to come and play the, the matches. So that's a huge thing for us. Yep. And um, you know, again, a major step forward for Pakistan cricket. Now you talked about the World Cup. Uh, obviously, you know, we probably get asked this a lot, but um, as a neutral um, that observes cricket, you know, one of the biggest contests, obviously, is between Pakistan and neighbours in India. Um, during COVID, a lot of the organisations probably had a lot of financial, um, you know, falling outs and, you know, difficulties. I guess there are people in the cricket fraternity or outside of cricket fraternity who are saying that maybe these two nations should have a bilateral series once again. Uh, in your opinion, I guess, you know, what, where does it stand at the moment in terms of um, future series with India or any other, you know, matchups with, with India moving forward? Look, I mean, one of the one of the challenges we face is that you know, I, th I think. Well, firstly, it's the first. It's a question I get asked more than any other question. Uh, my response is very simple: is that look, you know, you know, we'd we'd be happy to play India in a bilateral cricket. You know, whether it's uh, on neutral venues, wherever. Unfortunately, the issue we have is that the BCCI 
have to get permission through their government in order to play mm. us uh, because of the, um, the, the the rhetoric that the government has um, uh, towards Pakistan. So it's sad that politics and cricket have to mix, but it is the way that it is in India. Uh, we understand that. We've got a cordial relationship between the boards. And the yep. players have got great relationships with each other. Um, but, you know, and I keep saying to people that uh, whilst this government exists in India, um, we need to forget about bilateral cricket between India and ourselves um, because it just won't happen. Yep. So, you know, there's enough cricket for us to keep playing. Um, you know, we've got a big two years ahead of us uh, with a lot of major nations coming to us. You know, we're looking ahead, uh, we're looking forward to what is possible rather than, you know, what, what unfortunately, you know, should be happening but isn't happening. Um, you know, it's sad for cricket in the world, but it is what it is. Um, you know, but you know, we're certainly looking forward with a lot of optimism in terms yep. of the cricket we've still got to play. Definitely said for all our watches, <laughs> but what can you do, I yeah. guess? Uh, in terms of the World Cup, how how's the teams progressing um, and what are the plans moving forward for the World Cup? Yeah, look, we're progressing well. Um, you know, we've just recently won the ODI and the T20 series uh, against Zimbabwe, played, you know, we, we bloodied a few youngsters into that as well. So, you know, we've got a, a young Shaheen's team or an A team out in New Zealand at the same time, made up of eight to 10 of our best young performers in domestic T20 cricket. Um, so it'll give our head coach an opportunity now. Every country now has got a year to plan before the World Cup. I'm sure everybody will be trying out different combinations, but, you know, we're excited. We've got a good crop of um, youth and experience. Uh, T20 is a good forte for, of ours uh, in terms of where we have seen a lot of success. We were number one up until recently in, in world cricket, in T20 cricket. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're looking forward to um, the next year ahead and obviously planning towards the World Cup in, in 2021. And I know the staff and, and everybody within the PCB are, are working tirelessly behind the scenes to get ourselves as well prepared as possible uh, to give ourselves every chance of success at the World Cup. All the best to PCB and the Pakistan cricket team. Um, I guess the next question was the PSL uh, that recently finished. Wasim uh, obviously got delayed a little bit, uh, the semi-finals and the finals uh, due to COVID. Um, was it difficult uh, in terms of planning and in terms of revenue as well um, with the <coughs> postponement? Yeah, look, you know, we had to postpone it because there was a, a fear that, you know, one person may have, one player may have contracted or was, t you know, had, had shown yep. COVID symptoms. So, you know, we made a decisive decision to postpone it at that stage. I think that, um, you know, we were always planning to try and complete the final four matches. Uh, we were looking for the right window. We needed to set the biosecure protocols of the bubble in place for players to keep them safe, evidence that. Um, so we did a lot of work, our medical team and our domestic team, you know, deserve a huge amount of credit in terms of the hard work they put in over that period of time. Uh, to get us ready to complete those four matches. Uh, the matches took place uh, um, after the Zimbabwe series. So we, we had a bit of lead in into that in terms of the protocols that we had in place. Uh, but it, it was no small thing or an easy thing. You know, um, you know, we had to put a lot of time and effort behind the scenes to make it happen. But, you know, we were determined to complete the, the PSL. Uh, thankfully, we, we, we completed it with no casualties or any issues. Um, you know, and it was it was a big thing for us. And you know, yes, revenue-wise, I think every country has suffered uh, because of postponements. Um, when you postpone, you don't receive broadcasting money. The broadcasting money makes up a large chunk of your um, of your revenue, along with gate receipts uh, and those sorts of things. So we're no different to any other country. But luckily, we're in a, a decent financial position, and we have yep. been. For us, it was great to get cricket back on for the fans again in the country. Uh, we announced a domestic schedule. I think we may have been the only cricket board to have done that, um, who has a Southern Hemisphere sort of summer. Um, we announced a full domestic schedule back in uh, early September, and we've managed to complete and deliver that. So first class cricket is continuing under biosecure protocols. We've completed our domestic T20. We've completed the series against Zimbabwe and the final four PSL matches. Yep. Uh, and now we're planning, as we say, towards um, the South Africa touring in January and then the PSL again in Feb. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a big it's a big summer over the next few, um, you know, uh, next few days. Uh, sorry, next few months for us. One final question <clears> before <throat> I have five rapid fire questions. Was impressive part about PCB is advocating female cricket, uh, obviously, and in the roles of female females when it comes to administration or broadcasting. Um, tell us about how important it is, uh, you know, for, for raising awareness, 
especially in, in involvement uh, of females uh, in a nation like Pakistan. Look, it's hugely important, uh, you know, in South Asia, you know, if, if we have an honest conversations with ourselves that, that there's still a huge amount of work that needs to be done around equality uh, and equity when it comes to, to women uh, and the value that we place on women in our society and within all walks of life. So for us, you know, having our women's cricket team as ambassadors, as role models is hugely important because they have a, a public front facing um, sort of platform um, you know these girls a lot of these girls have seen a lot of hardships to get to where they are in terms of playing domestic cricket and then moving on to international cricket it was important that we raise the profile and raise the value of the girls so for example um, we changed the selection panel to an all-female panel because I think to be involved in, in cricket particularly in, in South Asia um, you need to have people involved who are a passionate about the game women's game and also have a knowledge about the women's game and it's not a token gesture so it was important for us to revamp that um, we've got three ex-players and um, including an ex-captain who is now chairing the, the he's a chair of selectors uh, average age of 32 so they understand the modern game they've got good relationships with the players um, so they have now come on board we've just recently brought david hemp on board who was involved with in victoria um, with the victoria women's side and also one of the women's big bash teams for a while an ex-player, first-class player from uh, England. Um, so he's come on board as our head coach. Uh, our girls now fly business class for any, any flights over five hours, like the men do. Um, you know, we've now, all the women now who play domestic cricket all get paid match fees, which has never happened before. Yep. We've increased central contracts. We've now got a, an emerging players category where we have nine players on that. So it's an evolving situation. You know, we started from a pretty low base and each year we're taking further steps forward uh, to enhance women's cricket and try and work with the girls to, to kind of utilize them more proactively uh, as role models. We're, we're developing them now as coaches as well, so we can send them back into communities, pay them for that. Uh, and that will deal with a lot of the cultural issues that we face within Pakistan and help address that by having female coaches coming in, working with youngsters. So we can increase the pool of girls playing cricket because that's one of the big challenges that we currently have. Since I guess my first question to you, Wasim, is who was your favourite cricketer growing up? Uh, firstly, probably Ian Botham when I grew up. Uh, then became Imran Khan when I discovered Pakistan in 82, watching him on TV. Uh, and then after that, ironically, it was Wasim Akram um, between sort of 86 and 92 um, during that period of time. So, yeah. Yeah, good list of all-rounders uh, there. Uh, and what's your favourite moment in cricket? Favourite moment, I've probably got two. One was personal, um, um, winning the championship with Warwickshire in 1995 uh, when I averaged 49, uh, opening the batting. So that was a big thing. And my second joint favourite was probably my first first class 100. I got 181 against Hampshire in my, in my fifth, I thought, sixth first class match. So that was probably a, a joint highlight of me in that 1995 season. Wonderful. Um, what does Wasim Khan like to do away from cricket? A uh, lot of Netflix. I've got a gym here where I live, so I go to the gym, watch a lot of Netflix, just switch mm -hmm. off. Um, UK is five out. We're five hours ahead of UK, yep. so my phone buzzes at 12 o'clock at night as all my <laughs> friends are getting back from work. So I generally find myself up until about 2 a.m., which isn't healthy, and then I'm up again at 7 a.m. in the morning uh, for work. Amazing. So, uh, yeah. Things Wasim Khan um, doesn't leave home without. Um, I always check for three or four things, my wallet, my keys, and my mobile phone. It's standard. Three things that Wasim Khan wants in his bucket list. Uh, bucket list um, to um, switch off more uh, and, and take more time out to smell the roses. Um, secondly, um, to Take, a, take holidays and actually take holidays rather than <laughs> be still on my phone having a look at emails. Um, and, and thirdly, um, I guess it's, it's not really a bucket list. It's more, uh, I guess, um, aspirations I set myself that I, I don't want to do. just eat healthier and just try and live a bit more of a healthier lifestyle. I think it's one of those things that um, everyone strives for. I keep fit in the gym, but my, my diet's terrible. So, um, you know, <laughs> my diet is, is one of those things that I definitely, I, I want to be better at in terms of eat, eating better. 
thank you very much, Wasim. Thank you for your time. Appreciate uh, the insights into Pakistan Pleasure. cricket. Uh, like I said, you know, we need a strong Pakistan national team uh, for global cricket to flourish. Uh, all the best for the future endeavors. Uh, fingers crossed we get more cricket within Pakistan. And hopefully, as a neutral lover, like I said, you know, we get to see India and Pakistan play in the future. Thank you so much. Shakti, thank you very much for your time.